despite the activity we're seeing on the equity side of things at the moment, we've got reports coming through highlighting that re returns of up to 10%, uh, the income from bonds is increasingly looking attractive as uh, prices hit earnings from equities. What kind of attention is the bond market, the fixed income space, stealing from the equity side of things? Uh, sorry, I didn't get that quite clearly. Please repeat it. Let's take a look at some of the activity that's playing out in the Kenyan markets at the moment. To what extent is uh, attention being uh, stolen by the bond market uh, and stealing away from the equity side of things? Uh, okay, the bond market uh, turnover has been pretty strong, and uh, the last month we had uh, 22 billion traded against 6 billion. Um, but what we are seeing with banks, uh, they are, they're becoming less risk averse, and uh, the banks currently make up about 58% of uh, the bond trades. But we are seeing increasing credit levels uh, being extended to households and to businesses. So this could probably um, come lower as banks uh, as banks look for for better yielding um, um, better yielding assets, uh, being be uh, loaning out um, their, their funds to the local businesses, to the SME sector, and to the private households, as opposed to putting all their money into the government funds, which are currently yielding low levels in terms of interest rates. So what's your outlook then for the equity side of things as we head into next week? Uh, next week will definitely be much stronger than this week. This week uh, we saw uh, reduced volumes, uh, mainly because the local uh, fund managers were doing their half-year reporting. And we also had a bit of uh, less traction from the uh, foreign funds, given the, the, the down look on, uh, on the global markets. Uh, but next week we expect uh, slightly higher volumes. Uh, we also expect uh, an hour week or in two weeks' time uh, the banks to start reporting their half-year financials, which we think will definitely provide strong stimulus uh, for the trading platform on the NSC. In the interim there's uh, quite a bit of interesting news keeping things uh, interesting on the equities front Bharti revealing its strategy for Kenya uh, today what are you anticipating in that regard I think uh, the market will be keenly watching to, to see what their full strategy is and the impact on this on uh, other players within the sector. And uh, given that uh, half-year reporting is coming through and we are also expecting um, stronger GDP growth uh, across uh, most sectors, it will take a while before the, the, the impact is actually felt on the currently listed players. Because for Bati, it will come out up today and, and, uh, and give a, a plan in terms of its strategy. But it also takes the time to actually roll this out and to actually have revenues accumulating to this uh, to this player and to also have uh, this player actually coming into the market and and uh, and taking away most of the of the customers who are controlled by the monopoly in the sector so where we've got safaricom sitting at five shillings 80 and many uh, players out there saying that uh, we should be looking at a share price sitting at around about six shillings 40 would you be a buyer in safaricom right now I'd be, actually, uh, I'd be a holder. We are currently at a lower price level uh, compared to the consensus estimate of 6.4 shillings. Um, currently, we're seeing a bit of profit taking, though what we are seeing is day traders who are coming in and trading volumes and accumulating uh, capital gains in terms of cents per, per, uh, per share that's actually traded. But if they're doing it on volumes and the, the, the cumulative uh, capital gain is, is, is quite extensive. Uh, we are seeing most of the foreign funds are actually trading in. Uh, we have Morgan Stanley that has been doing a bit uh, of pickup on the the stock and uh, the, the range I don't see it getting to about 6.4 at least before the, the third quarter of this year unless uh, they release their half-year results and they're able to augment their position come compared to last year. Let's take a look at Safaricom more in depth here because we know that this is a player that is and certainly not sitting on its laurels at the moment. Uh, it's invested heavily in uh, uh, ramping up its involvement in the data space specifically. What's your outlook for Safaricom and its ability in the longer term term as you see it, uh, you know, contending against a player like Bharti Airtel in Kenya? Well, for Safaricom, it's been uh, gradually diversifying its revenue base and it's uh, been aggressive in terms of its data outlook. And the fact that it has um, about 12 million uh, customers currently, it's, it's been very aggressive in terms of marketing um, um, data services on the, on the handheld phone. Uh, this is definitely going to help uh, in terms of stabilizing the ARPU levels. And I, th I think uh, what's going to work for Safaricom it's in terms of its value addition, um, the products that it's actually given to the customers, for instance, its MCash product, the alliance it has with Equity Bank, it's going to work in its favor in terms of uh, enhancing the stickiness of its customers. Because now you have a customer who has like two to three to five product uh, services, uh, service offerings from Safaricom, it becomes a little bit harder to actually come and make a, a value proposition if you're a competitor within the market. 
market. So I think at least in the in the short term, um, Safaricom has the advantage of uh, the stickiness of its current customer base. Yeah. It will probably take a time before that can be eroded and that will definitely sustain their volumes and the ARPU is going forward.